If you are new to Monk Sublimation and need some tips on placing your photos and graphics into a template, then this video is for you. I'll show you how to place and crop a photo into the designated template space, and I'll also show you how to combine graphics with other digital effects to make your mug look even more special. I'll begin with the software portion of this tutorial, then sublimate the mug and share the finished results with you. So let's go ahead and get started. So let me show you how I prepared the template for printing. I'll be using Photoshop CC 2022 for this demonstration. I've got a new document set up. It's 8.5 by 11, 300 dpi with a white background. And then I also have the photo, I'm sorry, the folder with the images and graphics that I'll be using today. So I'm going to pull the template and just simply drag and drop it onto the canvas. And just as a side note, you can actually fit two 11 ounce templates onto a single sheet of eight and a half by 11 paper. But today I'll just be demonstrating with this one right here. So Photoshop works on a layers system. So you can see right here, if I click on here, this layer is on top of the white background. So that's important to note because as we drag and drop the images and graphics on here, we would like them to be behind the template. So to do that, I'm going to click on the background layer, then click and drag and drop my first photo onto the page. Now, obviously it is too big, so I'm going to hold down my shift key and with my mouse, I'm going to resize this image. And I'm going to place it right in to this space right here. And that looks great. So no cropping required on this particular photograph. Then I'm going to do the same thing with the second photograph. And I did this on purpose. Notice that it's not behind the template. It's not a big deal. All I need to do is just click and drag and drop it behind. But it's just a good practice to try and stay as organized as possible when you're working with the layers palette. So again, I'm just going to hold down my shift key and position that into this space right here. Now I want this photograph a little bit bigger and I'm going to place it just, just like this, okay? Now this goes outside the bounds of the template and starts to spill over into the space where the heart is. So to crop away the parts of the photo that we don't want, make sure you have the layer selected, go up to the marquee tool if you hold your mouse down, you'll see all the different choices you have. I'm going to select Rectangle Marquee and just draw a rectangle slightly larger than that photo space right there. Then I'm going to come down to this palette and choose the masking icon. And so now you can see that it's added a separate part to this layer. So basically anything that is black has been concealed and this part right here, the white, is what's been revealed. And that's this part of the photograph. Okay, so I'm going to go back to my background layer again. Then for the center part, I'm going to choose this graphic that I got from Design Bundles. I think it's really pretty, the floral and the pinks match just beautifully. And I'm going to size this so that it fits in here. And click OK. Now you could fill, fill this with another photograph. You could put pers personal details about the occasion or the event. I've chosen to put graphics in here. And I wanted to do this because I wanted to show you a different way or an additional way of adding your own unique touch to a template. So this looks great as is. I mean, let me just make this just a slightly smaller here. And what I would like to do is add a background color because this would be the floral, floral pattern would be against the white portion of the cup and it, it looks lovely, but we're going to add some different colors here. So again, I'm going to click on the background layer and then I'm going to say new layer. So that's the plus sign down here. And here's our new layer. And then I'm going to go over to the draw tools. And again, if you hold your mouse down, you can see the different shape options. I'm going to choose a rectangle and I have the fill color as black and I'm just going to draw that around the heart and now it fills it with black. 
Now this looks pretty good too. I like the contrast of the black against the graphic and the pink. That looks really nice. But what I'm going to do is add some different effects here. So I'm going to go back to that rectangle that we just drew. Double click to the right and this will bring up the layer style palette. Then click on gradient overlay. Now make sure you click on the words gradient overlay so that brings up the different selections you have within that one. Now it has pulled up the very last one that I did. So this was this burgundy color, but let me show you how I got to that. So I've got the blend mode set as normal. That's the default and same with opacity. If I click on the gradient, Photoshop has a bunch of them already built in. So you can see all these different choices. They've got some really nice ones already done but I want to do a custom one. So I'm going to click on this very first black preset here. So it's half black fading to white. Then if I go down to the bottom, you can see what that gradient consists of. It's a solid black that fades into white. If I click on this bottom box, now I can see a color selection come up. Click on the color. Then I'm going to start by clicking on the dark heart that I have in here. This is like a dark pink fuchsia color. And I'm going to bring it down to about here. I want this to be more in the burgundy field. So maybe about there. I think that looks really nice. Click OK to select that. Click OK to say your gradient editor is good. And now you've got your custom gradient. Now I have it set on linear style. So that goes from bottom to top. You can choose radial. There's all different options that you can choose here. I think for this particular case, the linear works the best. I have it set at a 90 degree because I would like the contrast of the dark to the light to be the opposite of the template, which is light to dark. If you don't like that, you just click on reverse and it changes it for you. So these are the choices that I've made. I think this looks really nice, but again, it's, you know, you can do whatever colors you like. And then you've got scale to play with and you've got angle. So that could also play into it, but I like it at 90 degrees. I'm going to say, okay. And that looks great. <clears throat> so I'm very happy with the way this is uh, developing. So now I'm going to add some graphic, or I'm sorry, not graphics, but some effects to the graphic. So I'm going to click on it to select it. Here's the layer. Double click to the right. I'm going to add a drop shadow and I've got this set at the default settings and a bevel and emboss also in the default. Click OK and that just adds a little bit of dimension to that heart. And these are all personal preferences. You can add whatever effects that you like. And there you go. So this is how I go ahead and prepare my template before I send it to the printer. So you can see that was pretty straightforward and you've got a lot of design, you know, opportunities with a basic template. So the next thing I need to do is go ahead and send this off to the printer. So I'm going to go up to file, print, and of course you need to have a sublimation printer and I have the Epson Workforce 7720. Choose the print settings and this will bring up your Epson software. So you can see it says Epson Workforce 7720. I set up a bunch of defaults or um, presets, I should call them, for various printing options. So I'm going to choose this one here, the landscape. Now because I'm using photos, what I like to do is um, go into the more options and I take off the high speed and that seems to help a little bit. I don't tend to have issues with that, but I heard other people do. So I've just been recommending that just in case that's a problem for you. Click OK. Then I'm going to hit print. And what's going to happen next is that preset that I made, I've got um, a pop-up that will come up to confirm before I send it to the printer. So you can see here that it has mirrored the image. That was part of my preset. Now that wouldn't be a huge problem if you didn't do that in this instance because it is photographs. 
but if you had text in there, obviously that would be a problem. So this all looks great. I'm going to go ahead and send this off to the printer and then we'll go ahead and press this onto a mug so you can see the final result. When trimming the template, it is best to cut it as close to the edge as possible. This will help in aligning it to the mug. I'll be using an 11 ounce sublimation mug for this demonstration and I'm just going to take a cloth and make sure it's completely clean. You do not want any dust or dirt on here. And next we're going to take that template and make sure the orientation is correct. You definitely don't want it upside down. It's very easy to do. And then we're just going to try and center that as best we can to the handle of the mug. And notice the top and the bottom of the graphic line up perfectly with the mug. Then I'm going to take my heat tape and secure both those edges down. This is an important step. And what I do is I take my sublimation tape and I fold it over at the edge. And that way, when I go to peel it off, I've got a nice little tab there that is easy to grab with the tweezers and remove the print once it is sublimated. So now here we are at the mug press and I'm going to try and center this the best I can inside the heating element and I'm using a medium to firm pressure and I'm going to snap that into place and my press is set at 400 degrees Fahrenheit and that will be for 180 seconds which is three minutes. So the time is up, so let's have a look at this mug. Now the nice thing about a mug press is typically you can take it out with the handle without having to wear gloves, which is a big plus. And you can see how easy it is to remove that heat tape and the transfer. And now we have a beautiful mug. So the mug has completely cooled down, so let's take a closer look. I've got great coverage on here. You can see it transferred to the top of the mug and also the bottom. And I got great color. It's very true to the transfer. So as we look at that first edge, you can see that that's sublimated just fine. That looks really good. But when I turn it around, I can see that it's a little bit faded on the other side. Now I think what happened is I did not completely center the print against the handle of the mug. And you can see here it's just a little bit off. But if you do have an issue where your element does not go all the way around the print, what I would suggest is trim about an eighth of an inch off of each edge before you add the transfer to, or the print to the mug, and that should resolve the problem. So let's take a look at that gradient effect. And that came out really lovely. You can see it's just a beautiful color. And then if we look at the graphic with the drop shadow and the bevel and emboss, I think that looks great. It's very subtle, but I think it definitely adds a lot to the mug. So these mugs do come, or I'm sorry, these mug designs do come in two different sizes, 11 ounces and 15 ounces. And I'll put all the details in the description box below. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section. And thanks for watching and have a great day.